Okay, now obviously I'm going to be incredibly biased towards this. I know it doesn't seem like it because I've made no videos about this anime on the channel, but I have. They're just blocked forever because this franchise's legal team is defending this anime's copyright like it's Pandora's box. So honestly, if it wasn't for Crunchyroll, I wouldn't have been exposed to Yuru Camp. And I'm very thankful, but Crunchyroll, you suck at promoting things, all right? If it's not a mainstream shonen, they don't care. Like they had one article that said they were gonna stream this movie. And I know it's not very popular outside of Japan, but the fact that I found out that this was coming out on a torrent site and not from Crunchyroll says a lot about their priorities. It costs like eight bucks to like make a tweet on Twitter. Like a simple, hey, guess what? The Yudu Camp and SAO movies are coming out on Thanksgiving. Uh, stay tuned. I mean, that would've been nice. Anyway, I'm, I'm a bit irritated since this anime is like one of the few that has actually made a positive impact on my life. And this was kind of a tangent to tell you that I am biased. But for this to be an actual review, I have to be kind of objective. But I will also have a biased review as well. Which is obviously a 10 out of 10. I mean, this is literally another season of Yuru Camp, but with a time skip. They are adults and they have adult problems. Obviously, it's not gonna have serious topics and very low stakes. But as a fan into the comfy lore, there were some moments where I was actually hyped. Like, it's a shame I couldn't watch this in theaters because I would be those Marvel fans that would cheer when a character shows up. And there are actual moments that are genuinely sad. And it's all from the subtext because on the surface, it's still Yudu camp or laid back camp. And Yashike, which if you don't know, is a genre that is all about healing people that are stressed out from work and life. Usually it has a heavy focus on atmosphere and world building and less about plot. It's all about trying to find beauty in the mundane and how you can connect that with yourself. That's a cool definition, right? I got it from a Redditor named Zaria. So here's the non-spoiler review. If you're a Yudu Camp fan or Laid Back Camp fan, it's a 10 out of 10. I don't know why you haven't watched it yet. You can watch it officially now on Crunchyroll if you live in America. What a great Thanksgiving. I don't know about the other countries, but you probably have your sources. And if you're not a fan, and this is your first exposure to Yudu Camp, it's surprisingly entertaining and pretty engaging. Obviously, you have to be open-minded to the idea that it is slice of life, so there's not gonna be fight scenes or melodrama, but there is drama and there is a conflict, but it's more on the mundane side. For an objective rating, I would give it a eight out of 10, but even then it's still hard to say those numbers but I will knock points off for the animation since it's pretty basic and I was hoping for more creativity in its visuals. There are some moments of cool visual storytelling, but I wish there was more. Most of the background art is beautiful and when you're with the characters, you feel like you're experiencing it at the same time as well. Immersion! I feel like I'm there! But I will say it's mostly just a still frame. Sometimes they animate a pan but yeah, no, they don't painstakingly animate the individual leaves rustling in the wind. None of that hardcore Sakuga stuff. Also, the CG models of cars and Chimarin just aren't that great. And the film is aware it looks bad, so they try to minimize it, but it is distracting. This is also something you would never notice unless you frame by frame nitpick it, but the wheels don't actually spin. So there are a couple of examples of the film cutting corners, which is a bit unfortunate. However, the music by Akiyuki Tatayama is amazing and it does carry the movie during the scenes of limited animation. The comedy is mostly slapstick with funny cute moe faces. Uh, don't expect funny one-liners or quips, but when certain characters interact and react to situations, it does lead to some humorous dialogue. Oh, and also the voice acting is great overall. I think they do a very good job expressing a subtle sadness. They don't overact, well, except for Nadeshko and Chiaki, but even then, they're a bit toned down now because they're adults. I make it sound like a character died, but it's more about being disappointed by life. So yeah, that's the spoiler-free stuff. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I definitely recommend it. You know, set aside two hours and just relax. This is not a movie to get your adrenaline up. This is a movie where you sit back, meditate, and reflect about your life and the choices you have made. 
Now it's time to talk about the actual movie in a bit more depth with spoilers. So you might have noticed that this film is two hours long, and you might be wondering, with the original premise being girls going camping and discovering the rural beauty of Japan, how can you justify the runtime of this length without getting bored? And that was my biggest fear, is I would actually get bored instead of, you know, just vibing with it. But luckily, the story is easy to follow, and the characters are properly introduced. You don't need pre-existing knowledge from the anime to know who these people are. You will get invested in them slowly. And when the girls go through an actual crisis, you will realize that you just spent over an hour watching these young women do yard work, and it will be awesome. This movie will make you want to do housework. I mean, that's what happened to me, so I think some people might feel the same way. There are three main characters, Shimarin, Nadeshko, and Chiaki. There's also Aoi and Enya, but they are sidelined into supporting roles. They do have their own subplot, but ultimately the story is about the main three. The film starts off with the five girls camping together, and Nadeshko introduces the film's thesis, that she hopes to be able to camp with her friends together when they become adults. And then the next scene is Shimarin as an adult working for a magazine company in Nagoya. She gets her articles rejected, probably because she's not really passionate about it, even though she works ridiculous long hours to get it done. She has adult responsibilities now, and can't go camping as often as she used to. This is probably the most depressing thing to come out of Yuru Camp, and even then it's kind of funny. But this touches on the main theme of working hard towards something, but life finds a way to screw you over. I'm sure there's a condensed word for that. But this idea will be touched upon throughout the movie. Also, I feel like I'm using the word theme wrong, but then again, I make memes, not critical analysis, so forgive me if I use words incorrectly. Or don't. I mean, more comments the better. Then we get to Nadeshko, who lives in Tokyo, but she still connects with Shimarin via social media. They still camp, but now they do it alone since they all have their own separate lives. She works at an outdoor mall selling camping supplies. She's very knowledgeable about camping and very passionate. She sees some kids interested in camping, and Nadeshko starts to feel nostalgic. This is another theme from the movie, nostalgia and mentoring the next generation. Then we have Chiaki, who has the best glow up and is also an alcoholic, which is pretty believable. Chiaki is the first to reconnect with Shimarin, and her job is to promote tourism in Yamanashi. Chiaki has been given the opportunity to redevelop an abandoned facility in Takaori. There's a lot of land, so Shimarin offers the idea of turning it into a campsite. This inspires a drunk Chiaki, and she pretty much gets everyone back together. So honestly, Chiaki is probably the best friend you can ever have. Once Shimarin is back at Yamanashi, she starts feeling nostalgic of the area and explores it. It's a really nice moment, but this is also when a beloved character dies. Now, I did say that no characters die, but that was a lie. Something does die. The pine cone. It doesn't say hi. In the anime, there's a recurring gag of the pine cone saying hi when it gets picked up. And this just shows that yes, Shimarin is an adult and she has lost a part of herself that camping gave her. Which is a very convoluted way to say that she's depressed. Not the emotional kind, more of a she lost her way kind of depressed. And honestly, this is a very clever way of telling the fans that Shimarin isn't happy with her current life. Not through her emotions or words because she's not that kind of character, but through the environment. Since it doesn't interact with her anymore, that tells us all we need to know that something is missing. But then she sees the sunrise and Chiaki tells her that she was already planning to turn the abandoned facility into a campsite. But ideally, she wanted to do it with her old friends. And Shimarin gets inspired in her own introverted way. Nadeshko shows up and invites the two to her house to eat good food. We have a trademark Yuru Camp mukbang. Then Aoi shows up and we get an Enya cameo. Aoi is a school teacher and Enya is a groomer. A pet groomer. They're all together again after years of being apart. Each girl has their own perspectives and talents that they bring forward for this project. They all work together to create something special. They are the building blocks for the next generation of campers. Shimarin, from here on, starts to come into her own again, and she rides a sweet motorcycle. Also, I think Aya is flirting with Shimarin, 
But maybe that's just my shipping monkey brain corrupted by the live action adaptation talking. Back at her office, Shimarin pitches writing about the camping projects for the magazine, and the editor in chief approves because this time Shimarin is actually passionate and knowledgeable about the topic. And now she has an excuse to work on the campsite. This is probably the end of Act One, and the next act is pretty much the girls working on building the campsite. Along the way, they'll meet familiar, older faces from the anime, and there will be tons of fan service. Not the perverted kind, the remember this moment from the anime? Well, now they're adults kind of fan service. There's also a segment where Shimaren revisits campsites from season one of the anime, and that made me feel nostalgic along with her. And Shimaren becomes much happier to the point where the pine cones actually say hi again. And I was living vicariously through that, wanting to see her succeed. The girls even go camping together again, like old times. Like you really want good things to happen to them. You can't fathom anything going wrong. So when things do go wrong, it actually hurts because you don't expect something like this from Yuru Camp. It feels silly since the stakes are so low, but in the moment, it felt like actual betrayal. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So anyway, while they were working on the campsite, they found some artifacts. And because of that, the tourism board opted to close down the campsite and instead turn it into a historical site. They spent months working on it, and you were following their journey, and it ends just like that. Once again, working hard towards something, but life finds a way to screw you over. And the film gets really melancholic and quiet. The characters don't lash out or cry since they're adults. They just put their heads down, internalize it, and continue on with their lives. But they're clearly heartbroken about it. They all have different ways to express this sadness. Most of it is through the empty environment and some of us do the character's actions. Like Shimarin becomes a workaholic, taking on the work of others to distract herself from the disappointment, but also because she doesn't want to fail others anymore, even though the campsite getting canceled is not her fault. Enya walks in Elder Chikua, who is sadly slower than the other dogs, and reminisces on the good times alone. At this point, I thought Chikua was gonna die too because of how sad this movie got, and that's a testament to how effective the storytelling is, but still, like, holy sh Wow! I thought about it, and that was kind of Wow! <laughs> okay, moving on. Aoi's class graduates, and she learns that they're gonna tear down the school, which is really sad. Don't know why they had to do her dirty like that. But also, and this might be, like, <laughs> a stretch, is this supposed to be a reference to the fact that rural areas don't have many kids now because of the low birth rate? Because I can't think of a reason why you would tear down a school unless there are like no more kids to teach anymore. And that's really sad if that is the case. I know they will never acknowledge it, but it just seems weird to like incorporate this specific plot point. It's just really interesting. But luckily, Chiaki uses violence to tell Aoi that she is appreciated and that she should be proud of the work she's done. And this moment gives us a good moral. Although the physical work being done is no longer there, the experiences and memories you had with your friends will always live on with you you'll just have to move on to something else. Nadeshko gets inspired seeing strangers become interested in camping, and this revitalizes her passion to go camping with the first person that got her into camping. Technically, they went hiking, but you know what I mean. Shimarin and Nadeshko chill in a hot spring five feet apart because they're not gay, and this is probably the most emotional moment from the film. It's two friends reminiscing about the good times and discussing what they learned in life. And it all comes full circle for their respective character arcs. Shimarin learns that you can't do everything alone. As cool and independent as she might be, there are limits and it's okay to let others support you. Nadeshko realizes as an adult, her positive actions do have an impact. And eventually, it will be shared with others and the next generations to come. Rin wonders if she can ever do that, and Nadeshko assures her that she can, because she was the reason she loved camping to begin with. And that just made me tear up like a bitch. 
that came full circle. And honestly, if the movie ended right there, 10 out of 10. Like to me, that's the perfect ending. It encapsulates everything that makes Yuru Camp special. But it's not the end. The girls deserve closure for the campsite. So in the final act of the film, we learn a very important life lesson. That adulthood is all about compromise. So the girls combine the archaeological dig site with a campsite. You know what they say, creativity is just connecting things. So the girls take it step by step, and eventually the campsite is created and is finally open for the public. But there's one more twist. No one knows where it is. And this leads to the most hype moment of the entire film. I promise you, when I saw Shibaren bring out the old scooter, I popped off like my country just won the World Cup. This is why I wish I could have watched this film with the Yuru Camp community. One day, I'll find an Adeshko to prop me up. But for now, I'll just do my Shimarin thing and do things that I enjoy by myself. The film ends with the girls overlooking the work they have accomplished and all the happy campers. And they all promise to go camping again next year, which is also a pretty good ending. So anyways, thank you all for listening to me talk about Yuru Camp. I hope it doesn't get blocked for copyright. Please leave a comment on what you thought about this film. And once again, I hope you all have a good day. Okay, bye. Ah. 100円ください.